God cares that we have, He has our attention more than the habit of just turning into, you know, our prayer time, our devotion time, our meditation time. Because when we forget that we are there to give God our attention, it just becomes a routine. It just becomes a habit. Do you ever read the passage? Maybe you do your devotions in the morning, but do you ever forget them at night? You're like, what did I read this today? (laughs) What was the verse for the day? Like, it's on my app too. Like, it gives me the verse of the day on my app as a notification. I read it. I'm like, oh, that's a good verse. That is a powerful reminder. I should do that today. But then at the end of the day, we forget. So it's not necessarily giving God our time. It's not so much giving God a portion of my day. But more importantly, when we do our devotions, it's to really acknowledge and say, God, here is my attention. And and I I believe attention today is worth more than anything else. To give something your attention signifies that is your key importance in 2021. Whatever you pour your attention to signifies that's what's important to you. Not your money, not your time, not your resources, not your energy. Whatever you put your attention in. Because wherever your attention goes, everything else follows. Your resources, your time, your energy, your efforts, your passion. So think about your attention. Where does your attention often go to? Maybe it's on our phone. Maybe it's too much on our phone. Maybe it's too much into our careers. Maybe it's too much somewhere else that when we say, God, I'm here for you. It's like going on a date, but your attention is somewhere else. It's like hanging out with your friends. You're all there on the table. You're all saying, oh, my God, we haven't seen each other for weeks. I haven't seen you for years. And then you're just sitting on the table on your phones. Like you're there, but you're not there. That's how important attention is. But listen to this book. Henry Nolan once said, We are people who run around a lot, do many things, meet many people, attend many events, read many books. We are very involved. We experience life as many, many things. We go here, we go there, we do this, we do that. We speak to him, we speak to her. We have this to do, we have that to do. And sometimes we wonder how we can do it all. If we sit down, think about it, we are often running from one emergency to another. We're so busy and so involved, yet if we're asked what we're so busy with, we don't really know. People who wander from one thing to the other, feeling that they are lived more than they live, are very tired, deeply tired. It is a problem for many people. It is not so much that we do many things, but rather that we do many things while wondering whether anything is happening. And that is a terrible way to live life. It's almost as we're saying, we're going from one task to another, but our brain, our mind is either so far ahead, the attention is not in the present, or it's so far behind, it's catching up to that present moment. Wherever it is, it's just not there. Your attention, your present moment is not where it should be, and it should always be in the present moment. It's so far ahead, it's filled with anxious thoughts. It's so far ahead, filled with uncertainties. You're afraid, you're you're risk-taking, you're calculating this, you're measuring that. So when you're in the moment, you're doing your emails, but at the same time, you're already at the end of the day, completing all the tasks in your mind, but it's only 10 a.m. Or it's vice versa, it's late in the night, you're about to hit the bed, but your mind is not there. It's somewhere else, it's in the past. Is it reminding you of your failures, reminding you of the mistakes you have committed, and you're like, man, is this where I'm supposed to be? I wonder how my life will be different, and you just can't sleep, and you're so exhausted, and you're tired, and the next day, that cycle repeats over and over again, and I, I hear people that I've talked to, they have a hard time falling asleep, 
But falling asleep is a matter of giving your body attention. Going to sleep is a matter of turning off your mind, switching off the brain and say, hey, brain, don't think ahead, don't think back, think now. Sleep time. <laughs> but because our hearts are so anxious, it's so worried, it's, it carries so much guilt and shame. We do our devos, we pray to God, we try to make even our prayer a lifestyle, but it doesn't seem to work. Why? Because there is no attention. My best sleeps at night is when I pray really well, I'll be honest. And it's not those like dozing off, like napping, sleeping, and then falling asleep, but it's like I, I, I experienced God. I felt His peace. I felt the love. I, I, was, I am again reminded that I am loved and I am to love him. I am reminded it's not what I do, it's not what I accomplish, what I achieve, but who I am in him. That brings me so much comfort and peace and salah, pause, and then I knock out. <laughs> but when I don't pray, when I, and I'm so anxious, I will stay up all night. And because I can't sleep, I feel like I'm wasting time. I feel unproductive. It's like, oh my God, I'm just laying in bed for hours. This feels like just a waste. I might as well do something. So I get up, I study, I read, and it's like 3 a.m. and I'm just like super tired. And the next day, I... that's what happens to us. There is no attention given to God. And maybe a scripture here in verse, uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, Elijah was a prophet that served God so, so much, with so much passion. In the previous chapter in 18, he dueled gods. Like he put a contest of gods and say, whose God is better? Let's have a showdown. And whoever wins becomes a real, real God. And he, he, put, uh, he hosted it. He endorsed it. And he was a candidate to represent his God versus the, the God of the false gods. And they duked it out. And he won. He had this epic moment, this climax of his career. It's like, ah, everything in my life led up to this. I see now. But verse 19, he fell into depression, even suicidal depression. And we wonder, how can that happen? How can that happen to anyone? And that, that, that's something that even surprises the Christian world. When Christians fall, was it a matter of really doing our devotions? Or is it so, is it really a matter of giving God our attention? And this is what he says, or this is what the scripture tells us of the story. I've been working my heart out for the God of the angel armies, said Elijah. The people of Israel has abandoned your covenant, destroyed the places of worship, murdered your, murdered your, uh, your prophets. I'm the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me. Can you, can you feel um, the pressure he is putting on himself? Can you feel the, the burden and the weight, maybe even the shame and the guilt that... He is putting on himself like everything is falling apart. I'm the only one that is trying to keep this together, God. Can't you see that everyone in my family has turned away? I'm the only one that is keeping my faith. I'm the only one trying to serve you. I'm the only one that is being devoted to you. Can't you see that? Then he was told, Go stand on the mountain at, at attention before God, and God will pass by. God didn't just say, stand out there just looking dumb and, and you know, wasting time. In Tagalog po, lutang. But stand there giving your attention. Stand at attention. Try to be aware. Try to notice because I am about to pass by. When God says he's going to move, if God were to email you or text you today, it's like, this evening, I'm going to come by. How would you respond? Like, okay. Or, or oh my God, is that, is that God? Or is this God? Right? That's what we would do. A hurricane wind ripped through the mountains, shattered the rocks before God, but God was not to be found in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake, but God was, wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, fire, but God wasn't in the fire. And after the fire, a gentle and quiet whisper. And when, when Elijah heard the quiet voice, he muffled his face with his great cloak, went to the mouth of the cave and stood there. A, a quiet voice asked, 
So Elijah, now tell me, what are you doing here? When we stand at attention before God, sometimes it's not the, the wind, the earthquake, the fire, but the whisper of God is sometimes so faint that we have to lean in a little bit more than we think we should. We have to spend a few extra minutes more than we think we need to spend just to hear that quiet whisper and for us to respond and say, aha, now I have your attention. All right, thank you for visiting our YouTube channel. Again, if you like the content that we have, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to share this content, we do have discussion questions in the descriptions below. Uh, don't forget, we also have our Sunday services live at pinnaclevillage.org every Sunday. So with that, thank you for joining us.